Welcome to our video recorded service of worship here at Christ's Evangelical Lutheran Church of Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. This service is for Sunday, February 21st, the first Sunday in Lent. In our prayers this morning, we must pray for the family and friends of Jean Durr of our congregation. Jean died on Friday afternoon from the effects of a stroke she suffered last weekend. A private funeral service for family members is being planned for the near future. We will continue in prayer for all of the world in our constant struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Congregation Council this past Thursday evening voted to begin movement toward the resumption of in-person worship. The hoped-for date is March 14th. We will begin with one service, as we did last year during the time in which we held in-person worship. The Council will continue to monitor COVID infection rates and trends in our particular area and will make a final decision on the March 14th date in a meeting that will be held on March 4th. We will keep you all advised of the progress. When we resume, our hope is to be using a new camera system and software system here in the nave that will allow us to live stream our worship service as it happens on Sunday morning. So folks would be available to uh, watch it it would be possible to see it live, but also it will be posted for later viewing for those who are unable to be present at that moment. I offer thanks, as always, to the many of you who support our ministries through gifts and offerings we receive at the church office. Please also note that on our church website, there is a button that allows one to make a donation uh, automatically through that means. We thank you for your support. The focus of today's sermon message comes from our first lesson from the book of Genesis. Let's prepare for worship by the means of our prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour, pour out your, your mercy, mercy over us. us. Our, Our sin, sin is heavy, and we long to be free. free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our confession offered, God's forgiveness assured, we sing our gathering song number 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole, that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord, sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power, created us new hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with our lessons of the day. Our first lesson comes from Genesis, the ninth chapter. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by waters of a flood, and a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all the earth. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the first letter of Peter, the third chapter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel, according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O, o Christ. Christ. There is a flowering crabapple tree near the end of the driveway where Maggie and I live. It has been there for 31 years. I have fond feelings about it and I care about what happens to it. But in the receding distance of time, the reason we care about the flowering crabapple tree could possibly be lost. 
it is good to remember from time to time why the future of this tree matters to us. The flowering crab was a gift from me to my wife shortly after we bought our home and settled in there. There were once trees in the yard of our property, but they had mostly been removed except for some enormous oak trees which continue to survive through this day. The new tree was a sort of a sign of a new relationship between us and the place where we live. It was to be a sign of us putting down roots in this new location. The flowering crab was supposed to be a dwarf-sized tree, one that would be easy to manage. And that turned out to be a joke. It grew and it grew and it expanded to the point where it intruded on our driveway and on the street that runs by our house. It wasn't just unruly in growing outward, it was unruly in growing inward as well in a congested, ugly way. I had to whack it back to avoid having it scratch our cars. And the township whacked it back in the portions that intruded on the cars on the street. In a lot of ways, the flowering crab tree could be described as a nuisance. And some people would think that the prudent thing to do would be to cut it down and get rid of it completely. But that would be very tough for us to do because of our history with and our love of that tree. It might seem silly to say it, but we do have a sort of a love for that flowering tree that makes it tough to let go. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. It's a season for considering God's relationship with us and all of humanity. And in considering that relationship, our first lesson for the day from Genesis takes us back to virtually the beginning of creation and God's relationship with it. The Bible presents humanity as something God planted, as a crowning achievement at the close of creation. It was a humanity God wanted to be in relationship with. But Genesis portrays humanity through the creation story and those which follow to be an unruly planting, rebellious, self-centered, and in short, sinful by growing in ways which the Lord God never intended for us. In reading the early chapters of Genesis, a reader might conclude that it would be useful for God to just get rid of this portion of creation and be done with this humanity completely. In the story of the Great Flood, God almost did that. What we heard in our first lesson for this morning is what came after the almost. It is the story of what God does with what God loves. God acted without permission or concurrence or even discussion with Noah and his sons. God made a covenant. He said, as we heard, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. It was not possible for the God who loved his creation to walk away from relationships God had created. So God tried next a little pruning with the formation of a covenant with the people of this creation. If the human portion of the creation had been able to respond appropriately, the Old Testament and maybe the entire Bible might have been able to end right there. It did not end right there. It became a huge book with the problems caused by unruly human beings seemingly never ending, generation after generation. We who today gather in the name of Jesus Sunday after Sunday, need to understand this about humanity. 
that given the ability to choose, human beings will always, sooner or later, choose against the will of God, against the will of the one who has given us life. God tried with a covenant. And as we will see in the next couple of weeks of Lent, God tried several covenants. Nothing solved the problem. But as we've heard today, the Lord had made a commitment. And God is always faithful. As the Bible presents it, this is the context which set the stage for the events of the New Testament. Sometimes folks want to ask, why did Jesus have to die? The more basic question, the more prior question, is why did Jesus have to be born into the world at all? Through readings like our lesson from Genesis and what we will see that follows, we get the message. God loves every living creature of the earth too much to walk away. Redemption does not come easily or cheaply. Our gospel lesson tells us that Jesus of Nazareth was baptized and received just a moment to enjoy the glory of that but then was banished to the wilderness to be tested by Satan for 40 days. At the end of that temptation, however, Mark tells us that the Lord was able to arrive in Galilee and say boldly, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Once again, with humanity's concurrence, the whole story might have ended right there. But the people did not fully repent. And they did not fully believe. And so Jesus had to move on to the other and greater and final purpose for why he had come. He knew what was coming all along. This is what we will hear about in the coming weeks of Lent. A Lord calling humanity to a repentance that people did not want and still do not want. A Lord who made the commitment to push the issue and to go to Jerusalem, despite the opposition and with knowledge of what was coming. It remains the most amazing demonstration of love that the world has ever seen. And now that we've heard about the history of it, all the way back to Genesis, we have a sense, a foundational sense, of why the Lord God did all of it. This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. You don't have to love even a flowering crab apple tree to get that point. Living together in trust and hope with believers around the world, we confess our common faith. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord, we again turn to you as we worship this week asking your mercy upon our suffering world, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. We once again pray for all who have suffered. We pray for those who support them and seek to assist them. We pray in remembrance of those who have died from the effects of this virus. We pray with hope for the promise of vaccines starting to be distributed everywhere. Continue, O oh God, to bless our world. Help us to overcome the challenge of these days. Here at home, we ask your blessing upon the family and friends of Jean Durr and other families who are grieving the loss of members who have died so far this year. We pray for all who are named on our prayer list this week, asking that you would bless the lives of each according to your wisdom. As we have named these before you, O oh God, bless also those named before you now as well. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. And wherever you are watching our video, share the peace of the Lord with those you love. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are what God has made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is number 517, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Reminder, everyone, that we will be producing a weekly Wednesday liturgy of Holden Evening Prayer, available for you in the same way that you access these videos. If you are a local congregation member and wish to stop by at the church to pick up a pamphlet of the liturgy of Holden Evening Prayer so that you may participate along with us, please feel free to do so. Those services will be available beginning with this coming Wednesday evening. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please enjoy our postlude prepared for you for this morning. I want Jesus to walk with me. to walk with me. 